the national team, like growing up on it kind of like has really taught you to like use your voice and just be like confident in what you say and like standing behind that. And I feel like even more confident off of the field because of like the teammates that I've been surrounded by. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Snacks. I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And this is a show about women's soccer, but it's also a show about how I have the giggles right now. Oh my goodness. I actually thought of something to say at the top or bottom today when I was swimming, but oh, I, okay. I forget what it is. So maybe it'll come back for me for come back to me for one last thing. Okay. Thanks for telling us that useless information. Was that a fun story? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Here's what we're doing today on the podcast. And to be so week three challenge cup, Alex Morgan is our guest. We just got done recording it and I am giddy. It was really fun. Uh, but before we get to all that, Lynn, sup, fam? What it do? Why did we both <laughs> say such weird things? <laughs> See, we're giggly. I don't know. It's like, I feel like we are like, we came off a high from talking to Alex and now we're like, well, I know we got to like go to the top and be like cool again. I don't know if anybody's like Lynn and Sam cool girls. I think that's, I mean, Sam cool girl Mewis. I'm really excited for people to hear because we talked to Alex about Taylor Swift. Yeah. So I'm Taylor really Swift, excited for people to hear about that. A little soccer, a little bit about Charlie, a little bit about what makes her feel her best self. Yeah. We're gonna what talk makes about you, what makes you feel your best self? That is a great question as well. Like, when do you feel like this is who I am? I was going to start singing a song, but I don't really know a song with any of those words in there. I feel my <laughs> best self when... I'm with Marley and when I'm with my nieces and nephews. So like my family, oh, yeah. well, I like, not that I don't love like my mom and dad and sister, but I just feel like when I'm with Marley, that's obviously my person. And the kids are just so funny to me. Like, I just think they are hilarious. They do weird stuff and I love them. What about you? I love that. Well, actually, do you want to hear a hot take? I actually, sometimes okay. I'm like, I'm my best self on snacks. Sometimes I'm like, I bring my, I bring my best energy and my best little jokes here that I like, I get like endorphins. When you are done recording, do you just like, I have to go like smiling a little bit. Oh, you just like lay down. Like, oh, I know I have to like bring it down. Like I'll walk in the other room and be like, what's up everybody. Welcome to snacks. I'm Sam Mewis. <laughs> and everybody's like, you need to chill. Yeah. Like, please like go on a walk like you have to relax I know I feel like I find myself like walking around just smiling yeah it's like so fun I know I love All right. it enough about snacks let's talk about the NWSL so there was a lot of late goals this weekend not gonna lie didn't watch a lot of the games because I was playing in my own game so that would have been hard to do which was hot it was so hot uh I feel like it was hot on the East Coast just in general, but Orlando mm -hmm. was so hot just for a random two days. I feel like normally we're used to playing in the heat in summer. So you're like, yeah, I'm just used to this, but it's April. And then the game went on for literally ever. 107th minute, Lynn Williams scores a goal. So it couldn't have been that hot, sis. It was hot. I'm just like well, a reptile. I've, you've, I've always said this about myself. I thrive in the heat. I'm like a reptile. Do reptiles thrive in the heat? Yeah. Fun fact about myself. When I lived in Fresno on my pecan orchard, we used to have lizards. And when it was cold outside, they didn't go very fast. But when it was hot, they would run away everywhere. Fascinating. Fact, so I'm like a reptile. That's where we need our uh, fact checker to come in and give us a fact about reptiles. But your game, you guys won two to nothing. Uh, Midge scored a PK in the hundredth minute, and then you scored in the hundred and seventh. You just not letting that clock die without getting your foot on a ball near the goal. Latest what? goal in NWSL history, <laughs> and tied Sin Christine Sinclair for the second most in NWSL history. Did you know that? I I did. Now, yeah. So keep it, kicking, girl. I'll keep keep kicking and big footing. Great. <laughs> the rain beat the wave one to zero in a last minute of stoppage time winner by Olivia Vanderyat. I Is she from Seattle? I think I, I saw think that. Maybe. Hometown hero. Hometown hero. Okay. Um, Angel City play Louisville tied 2-2. Two -two. That's the third straight draw for Louisville. Do you, What do you think that means? Honestly, I haven't watched many of their games. I'm, I'm going to just say tough to beat. 
because that covers all my bases. <laughs> like, I don't really know, but I feel like they're. I'm no, sorry. A... I think that was a really hilarious <laughs> thing for me to say. <laughs> sorry, we are a little giggly. Red Stars. They played Kansas City and they beat them four to two. What an odd scoreline. I saw that and I after the game and I was like, what's going on there? Odd. I know. Tough game for Kansas City. They did well to come back and score two late goals when they were down by that deficit. Um, they still have some people injured. Uh, but on the positive side, Dabinia scored her first current goal, and so did Mimi Larson. Yeah, I saw I saw Dabinia's goal in natural Dabinia fashion. She chased I, the keeper, and I was I like, know. that was sick. It was so sick. And you know what I was thinking about was when I have gotten to play with Dabinia, all the times I could have given her a pass like that and messed up and kicked it out of bounds instead. So I'm happy that she has she good assistance somebody. around her. <laughs> That's so funny. Sam, you assisted people all the time. What are you talking about? Check the stats, Lynn. I really didn't. Um, but Portland I and Houston, like you assisted me. So just accept the compliment. I accept Portland tied Houston one to one crystal scored again off of a pass from Sophia Smith. And there was a controversial goal to maybe win the game from Houston, but then it got called back and then it didn't get VAR and people were questioning the call. Well, I'm also questioning the call because I am under the impression that if they call something and you score, no matter they, because they they'll say like if you're offside, continue to play and put the ball in the back of the net because they'll have to go back and re like re. I know, it. but it sounds like the ref blew the whistle to stop play. Then it went in the goal, but so it was just like a, a let's just say the goalkeeper didn't have possession of the ball. Yeah, and it should have been allowed to go on. Like the ref blew the whistle, so once you blow the whistle, it's like in a it's like. Not yeah, so like not to bash the ref, but the ref shouldn't have blown the whistle. Yeah. Right. Because, well, because I, I think that's that the that... thing is it's not the same as offside. The ref shouldn't have blown the whistle if it's offside and could be a goal scoring opportunity. But for a foul, I don't know if that's the, if that's the same rule. I know, but you know how they, oh, well, I don't know if you know, cause you weren't in the, like, I was not VAR meetings, but they are telling refs, like, if you don't know for certain, don't call it. Like, don't just make something up or assume. So, like, I wonder, like, the positioning of where the ref was, if they could see. Yeah. But I, again, like, I'm not there. Yeah. I know. I guess we will chalk this one up as a tie, and we don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, but we saw the new Portland uniforms. Yeah. The Ed Hardy uniforms. I know. Like, talk about. I, I'm going to go out here on a limb. And I'm going to say, I didn't mind them. Are you just saying that because you want to be controversial? Or are you saying that because you think that? I did not mind them. And you, what, you think I want to be controversial? You know I don't want to be controversial. <laughs> I'm just out here spreading positivity and love, Lynn. I'm going to move on. Like, I don't... Not if I move on first. The Challenge Cup is has started this week. It will have been last night when this episode comes out on Thursday. So... There's a prize money of a million dollars. Double last year. Ha. Huh. You beat me to that punchline. The sponsor of the Challenge Cup, UKG, ups the prize money to level with similar men's competitions like in the MLS. Uh, the MLS is back, which had a prize pool of $1.1 in 2020, which is, like, really exciting. I think that mm -hmm. the Challenge Cup in years past has been used as a preseason tournament, and last year there was a, a good prize money amount, which made it, like, more... I guess, I don't know if it makes it more competitive, but it certainly makes it more, like... The stakes are higher. Um, and I think that playing this one throughout the season, kind of like how you'd see a league tournament or a league cup in another mm -hmm. country, it just makes it like really interesting. Like are teams going to rotate players as much or are we really trying to like win the challenge cup because of the higher stakes? Like, I think it's a cool question. Yeah, I agree. I think that last year, even though there was prize money, first of all, it was announced really late. Mm. And then the whole challenge cup was played before the season. So everybody kind of felt like it was like this preseason tournament. Mm -hmm. And then you have just money on the line. So they, I definitely think there's a different feel. Um, I'm interested to see how teams rotate or handle this because it's, we're going to have three games in a week. Like a lot of teams just played in the weekend. And like you said, the first game of the challenge cup will have been played last night when this comes out. And then, this upcoming weekend people are playing again so um i think it's gonna 
people are going to take into consideration, like squad depth. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you, there's money on the line. I think money motivates. I don't care what anybody says. It definitely does. What is the minimum salary in the league? Uh, The minimum salary is 35. And if we're talking, let's guess that the challenge cup is 20. Like that's a huge increase. Yeah, that's 75. I don't know math, but 75% of you do something with the division (laughs) and multiplication. It's a lot. But that's like a lot that could really increase somebody's salary and stuff. So (laughs) it literally could increase somebody's (laughs) salary. I agree. (laughs) Anywho, it's a lot of money. It's a lot to play for. I don't know if this is like the the perfect setup either for the Challenge Cup. Like, I think we have to try it and see how it goes. Yeah. But I do think it's interesting, um, like you said, in other leagues, like mm-hmm. you have like Conti Cup and you have FA Cup and you have Champions League. And in, in the NWSL right now, all we have is the NWSL Championship. So adding another cup, I think, is cool, like to be able to win trophies for your club. If anybody doesn't know, the Challenge Cup, like we said, is the first game kicked off yesterday. There's going to be three groups of four teams. There's an Eastern, Central, and Western divisions. And then the top seed moves on. um, And then the second best seeded team gets a spot in the Final Four knockout stage. Yeah, so it's a six-game round robin in the group stage. So, for example, Gotham will face Washington, North Carolina, and Orlando twice, once away and once home. So that's like also kind of crazy because you're playing the same teams Two more, times for a Challenge Cup and then two times for regular season. So we'll play Washington, North Carolina, and Orlando four times. I know you haven't played in your Challenge Cup get, get, game yet this year. <laughs> good, 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 good game. Yes. Does, do you think it's going to feel different than a regular season game? I don't think so. Um, just because they are the same teams that you're seeing over and over again. I don't, I don't, think, so. I don't think so. I think it, we've in the past have had like three game weeks in regular season. So I think this is yeah. like another one of those where you're just like, it's a, it's another game. It's a player or sorry, it's a team in your league that you want to beat, but I could be wrong. Find out tomorrow. Yeah. We'll find out tomorrow. Um, okay. Well, Wednesday nights are about to turn up out here. Lit. Get Liddy. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> the latest biggest news is Julie Ertz signed with Angel City. Did we see that coming? Yes. Does it help Angel City? Yes. Do we think that we can have brunch with Natalie Portman at her house? Yeah. 50-50. Well, I'm really happy for Julie, and I think she's going to help the team a lot. She's a great player, and any team would be lucky to have her. I agree. Okay, so with all of that said, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to have Alex Morgan on snacks. Everybody, get ready. Today on Snacks, we have someone whose list of accomplishments is truly ridiculous. This is going to kind of be a joke, so bear with me. Two-time World Cup winner, two-time Olympic medalist, SB Award winner for Best Female Athlete in 2019, two-time U.S. Soccer Female Athlete of the Year, four-time CONCACAF Player of the Year, five-times FIFPRO Women's World Eleven member, five-times She Believes Cup champion, last year's NBSL Golden Boot winner, and perhaps most importantly, mom to Charlie. Definitely Folks, most importantly. it's Alex Morgan joining us. <laughs> On snacks. Yes, I know, Alex. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. I've been waiting for the invite for like a year and a half. So thank you. (laughs) We wanted to make sure it was like smooth before you came on, but clearly that didn't happen. So um, oh, so here we are. I have a pretend mic. So if we ever want to look official, (laughs) here it is. And I'm in a storage closet, okay. but it's okay. That's besides the point. And your eyebrows look great. If anybody, I keep staring at them. I'm like, wow. I know it's inspiring me to get my eyebrows done. Don't look at ours. I know I'm a little <laughs> concerned this summer um, if we leave for like two months. I'm like, how do I get this on the road? How do I do this without bringing my eyebrow lady? No, don't they have like tinting kits and stuff you can get? Like, I don't I'm know. I'm going to have to. Seriously, I'm going to have to go into the deep, dark, deep, dark web and like find the stuff the professionals do. I feel like somebody on a t- the team has that like skill set. I, yeah, I feel like Christy maybe could give you a link. Oh, she has good brows for sure. She can. Yeah, she can I, out. I agree. Well, okay. We have to start with the most important question. We want like a TikTok of you showing people a tutorial of your pre-wrap. Like how do you put your pre-wrap on? It's so easy. Um, okay. Actually, <laughs> so many people do it like around their leg and I'm like, that's interesting. I literally just put it around my neck and I like then rip off the piece. And I'm like, 
around the leg and then you tie it around the leg and then you take it off the leg i feel like just doesn't seem like the most efficient way that? to do it a lot of my teammates definitely Kristen mcnab not to like throw her out there but i have seen her do it <laughs> i'm just like i feel like just oh around gosh. the neck tie it here and then you put it up super easy well, that would like never work for me because I have the smallest head and the biggest legs. So like that. Oh yeah, that your proportions are so off. Well. I'd be like, I got two heads. Yeah, Lynn, you have like the biggest uh, quads I've ever seen. I mean, in a good way, a really yeah, good way. <clears throat> Strongest. Thanks. You're this a strong, strong lady. Um, okay, so obviously, like you're prolific when it comes to scoring and stuff, but we want to get to know more of like Alex not soccer Alex fun uh, Alex fun Alex so when do you like feel most like yourself I feel most like myself when I'm home like just with Charlie and Serrano like walking my dogs taking Charlie to the park the playgrounds like pushing her on the swings for literally 20 minutes I'm like you don't want to go down the slide you don't want to play with any of the kids okay I'll just keep pushing you I have just like a big family between me and Serrano we have like a lot of just great support pieces and so I just feel myself when I'm around my family like I talk to and see my parents my sister my husband's mom like probably every week and I yeah like I'm seeing my dad right after this I my mother-in-law stayed the night last night um like I, I just see people all like my family all the time and like my family means the world to me and so I think I just feel myself and my best self when I'm surrounded by my people. Yeah, I love that. You said you have dogs. We obviously love dogs here. I don't have any, but Sam has Finn. What are your dog's names again? Big dogs. Yeah. Kona's a smaller <laughs> one. She's only 75. Blue's the big boy. He's 120. And oh. literally we try like he was like 105 at one point where like he looks good, like figures nice and like we have him on a strict diet, like no extra treats. I don't know what happened. Now he's 120 <laughs> and it's not going down anytime soon. How much is Finn? Finn is like 17 pounds <laughs> and my sister-in-law is living with us and she just got a puppy that who's like a, p a tiny, like four pounds. So I literally have these two little baby dogs with me all the time. It's so cute. Yeah, 17 pounds. would literally eat yeah. them. Yeah, no, I mean, Blue would... <laughs> Yeah, probably eat 17 pounds yeah. worth of food in like two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love my dog and they're the sweetest. But when I'm out walking them, they're like seriously my biggest protectors. They will want to kill anything that tries to get in my way. It, that is so sweet. Finn barks crazy anytime somebody comes to the door. And I almost like think it's a good thing because... Like, we obviously don't train him to bark, but, like, if somebody's coming to the door, they're going to think we have, like, a huge dog in here. So I feel like it's, like, kind of a protect built-in, like, home security. Yeah. <laughs> 17 pounds of muscle right there. So, obviously, like, you have so much going on all the time. Do you feel like when you're with your family, that's, like, your time to, like, decompress and not think about all the stuff? Yeah, I definitely try to be, like, present with Servano and Charlie and my family. It is really hard what my day is like usually is I wake up at like 6.45 or 7. I get Charlie up at 7.15. It's kind of like mad rush for the next hour to like get all of us kind of fed, like get her lunch ready, get her dressed, to so like get her in the car, drop her off at school, like go to training. I'm here until about 1.30 or 2. And then from there I have like two and a half, two to two and a half hours to do like errands, whatever I need to do, like zoom interviews and random things and like go to like me and my husband hat you know my husband Serrano me and Sir I don't say my husband me and Serrano like he'll be at the office like we share an office space not at our house just because it's just man I would so rather not have it at the house so sometimes I'll go to the office and like we'll chat a little bit about some work that we're doing together so those are like two to two and a half hours and then 4 30 I pick up Charlie or Serrano does and then it's like family time until she goes to bed at eight and then I get to just like decompress for an hour and then I'm exhausted at nine and I go to sleep and that's our day. How do you decompress? I mean usually I lay on the couch and I literally look at my phone and I feel like a blob 
I cannot think for like 30 minutes. And I, Sirvan is like, get off your phone. Like lit- he calls in being plugged into the matrix. He's like, okay, you are plugged into the matrix. Like get out of there. And I can't help it. It's just so easy to just like scroll like Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. So sometimes like we like to watch shows if we can, like we watch a show, we should watch Ted Lasso, the latest show last night. And then I like to get, I like some like self-care, like facials or um, getting my eyebrows done, getting my nails done. So try to get, try to do that. But it's definitely like a fine balance. I feel like sometimes I can't even catch my breath through a whole day. So um, Servando is, is great. And having a nanny really helps a lot because I feel like sometimes I can just like go home and just like not have to worry about Charlie or anything because I know she's being taken care of but I can just get like a moment to just chill we asked Pino this too because I I feel like you guys are a little bit in the same boat of there's like soccer famous and then there's like famous famous and you're like famous famous and I feel like you have so much going on but you're also just like a human being as well and me and Sam talk about this like anytime there's something going on or there's something in the world it seems like you know about it. Like you are speaking on everything. Like anytime there's like a new sports announcement, you know what's going on. Cindy came into camp and you knew all, you had all the questions. Like how do you have time to know all the things and also your family and then decompress? Like how do you do it all? I don't know. I don't know, Lynn. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, I like... Or do you like not even think about it? You're just like, this is my life. Like I have to do just do it. No, like I love me. I love keeping up with like everything, like with what's going on in the world, with all the updates. Like I do spend a lot of time like talking to Servando teammates, like my family, just about what's going on. Like I do enjoy kind of that side of it. And not only like the soccer side, but the business side and um and everything behind the scenes as well. Um Like it, the NWSL and the success of it over the last year or two has really fascinated me. So um, I love to learn about that sort of stuff as well. And I've gone into investing a lot more in the VC world. Um, So like that interests me as well. So I feel like you have, you kind of have like the interests and the hobbies. um, And then you have soccer, which obviously is a huge part of my life. And then I have like the things that go along with being like, a public figure um and then i have like my foundation um which i just launched um a month ago the alex morgan foundation which is um really aims at um helping and supporting girls in sport and um and oper- really support for moms as well uh so those are big factors but i feel like Every time I kind of take a a breath and I have a little extra time, I'm like, okay, like, what can I fill my time with? Where can I put like a little extra of my time? Because maybe something slowed down. Like there was a point where where the article came out with Mana and Sinead in The Athletic. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, Paul Riley, um, obviously at the forefront of the abuse and assault, but not just him. Obviously, there was just like, a bunch of things just continuing to come out about the end of cell. And I felt like for months, 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 like that was my priority was like supporting Mon and Sinead and making sure that um, the league like protected players first and foremost. And once like I shifted and it was like the league was finally paying attention, I was like, okay, we're going to put my focus now. So I feel like every like mm-hmm. few months I've something has fallen into my lap in just a great way that I've been able to like put attention to. And it's like hard to explain how or why or what's going on but um but yeah there's never a dull moment I think that's so cool Alex to hear that the things that you put your focus on kind of um get resolved I feel like that's such a testament to the power that you have when you lend your voice or your time to a cause whether it was about the league the anti-harassment policy now this foundation we know you're involved in the company together being so involved in equal pay in the lawsuit like you're lending your voice and it's so powerful that these situations get resolved and then you can move on and kind of give that power elsewhere. Um, So that was really cool to hear you talk about how those things tend to like move on. And I, I think it just speaks to like the power that you give a cause and it it must be amazing to see those things get resolved. But um, 
like we're so grateful that you lend your voice to all these meaningful things too thanks sammy yeah. it's yeah it's just it's great to be a part of really important causes and be able to like yeah like you say like see a resolution at the end on whether that takes a week a month or a year or more than a year mm -hmm. but it's it is it is like so worth it and i feel like this the national team like growing up on it kind of like has really taught you to like use your voice and just be like confident in what you speak how like in what you say and like standing behind that and i feel like i just i feel like even more confident off of the field than on the soccer field because of like the teammates that i've been surrounded by you know it's just starting out on this team yeah. with abby wambach and um, Shannon Box and Lauren Chaney and a lot of these players who I I felt like they had their shit together like no questions asked I mean behind the curtain of course like of course no one had their shit together but it's just like the way that they carry themselves I was like wow like I can learn so much from these players and it was I think that that's definitely a positive thing from being on the team for so long because a lot of times it feels like you're just in this never ending like ground on day or your cycle or um you know vicious cycle that you feel like you're in a pressure cooker all the time and it's it's nice to know that there's a lot of positives that come out of it in thinking non-soccer yeah me and sam actually talk about that all the time about how you go on the team or you enter the team and you're like i just want to play soccer like i want to be the best of the best i'm trying to compete and maybe not your first camp but if you get the opportunity to get called back a couple times you realize like it's not just about soccer there's so many women who are like no we're gonna be badass on the field but we're also gonna fight for all of these things that we need and deserve and have to fight for and so you like have this sense of okay I'm more confident as a human being I'm more confident as a woman but now I need to like also fight for all these things and I think that your story is like so unique because like you said you grew up on the team um and I think that a lot of people see you as like amazing Alex Morgan, amazing goal scorer, beautiful woman, but they don't get to necessarily always see all the things that you do behind the scenes. Um, and so I'm really happy you brought up the anti-harassment policy. Like, I don't think our league has an anti-harassment um, policy without you, which is incredible. I don't even know if there is an NWSL without you because you're, <laughs> you put, you fought and pushed for that so much. So I think that like, I just want to take this time to say thank you so much for using your platform and realizing that you have it and say, you know what, I'm going to help. Obviously you like do all the cool stuff. You still have to do the stuff to get this platform, but you've really decided to put people who don't have a voice um, in front of you sometimes. So I think that's very cool. Thanks guys. I, yeah, I, this is the Alex Morgan hype podcast. I know. I like didn't know <laughs> yes. what we were going to chat about, but, and I didn't know if you guys knew it was going to take a turn like this, but uh, no, I appreciate we all that you guys said right now. Like it's, it's really awesome. And this league would be standing strong. I'm positive without <laughs> me. Would there be an anti harassment policy? At some point there would, I think. <laughs> but <laughs> But not in 2023, that's for sure. Okay, let's talk about like more soccer fun stuff. But also, I don't think that as like friends and teammates, we'd get to like compliment each other all the time and say thank you. So I think that on this podcast, we've been doing that a little bit more because it's just our opportunity to be like, thank you so much. But anyways, let's talk about soccer. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that because I feel like we actually don't. And when we like Lynn and camp, Sammy, you haven't been around but uh, like lately, but we had Julie's 100th, we had... Becky's 200th and it's so special to be able to like actually say these incredible tr incredibly true and like nice things about your teammates because we just don't really say that to each other enough so yeah yeah usually we're going mono -y mono we're like get out of the way <laughs> oh yeah for sure it's like sibling <laughs> rivalry okay so you're back from camp obviously you're with the wave are you how is it being back you said you're back in this new facility now yeah um, it's good oh i feel like from going from austin to st louis and then we had a away game in seattle um i'm lucky because san diego like didn't play preseason anywhere but san diego because usually we have really nice weather whereas this preseason mm -hmm. we had this year so far we've had more rain in san diego than seattle like i don't even, i'm like what is going on it's crazy oh my gosh yeah california my parents are also like it's flooding everywhere it's insane and it it snowed in Fresno. My dad was like, what? No, it's crazy. Um, in this time where 
you both are only with your club teams for the next few months and you have a bunch of games. Like, how do you focus on the NWSL knowing that the World Cup is approaching so quick? Yeah, it's kind of a different mindset and approach because with <clears throat> any other previous World Cup or Olympics, if like you basically have like a couple camps leading up and you never have, to, we never had two months like uninterrupted NWSL without mm -hmm. like forget about even leading into a World Cup just in general. We've never had two months uninterrupted time. So I don't really know. I mean, I'm interested to hear what Lynn thinks, but I feel like Vlaco has said something which no coach has ever really come out and said, which is like your club play really dictates right now. Like if you're going to make this team and like what kind of time you're looking at, you know, obviously players can come into form like before the World Cup and during the World Cup. But he's like, I'm I'm coming to games like he was at the Seattle San Diego game that we just played. He's like going to games every weekend, like looking at players. So I feel like that's the first time that we've had a coach come out and just be like, yeah, your club play is important and that's what's going to make or break like a spot for you. So I don't know, Lynn, how do you feel about this time? It's a long time, more than two months. It's uh, yeah, it's a long time. This would obviously be my first World Cup. So a little nervous, honestly, like I think that like you said, he's like your club play is going to dictate if you make this roster. And for me, instead of like looking forward and saying like, I, I got to do all these things to make the roster, I'm just trying to focus like on the present and be like, I'm just going to try to improve and get better every single day and take every game like it's your last game. Like that sounds cliche, but it like really matters right now. So yeah, um, I don't really know. I just like a, like a little bit of pressure, but I guess like we're going to have more pressure at the World Cup. So if we can handle this pressure and get through it, then it's going to kind of help us like succeed when other, other things are like going around. Yeah. Because at some point, something's going to happen where you're like, okay, we need to like figure this out, blah, 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 whatever that might be. So if, if you can get through this time where it's you're uncertain, then I think that's actually going to help us more than hinder yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think like also playing like sometimes it's out of your control, like playing for a team that's just like mm -hmm. not doing well or like dropping game after game or um, a lot of injuries yeah. on a team or whatever it is. So you're not like at full strength. But I actually think like having this time is kind of nice in a way to like focus just on one team. I feel like I'm always mm -hmm. in two mindsets, especially in like a major tournament year. And I feel like it's you almost have to just like be like, yes, World Cup is coming up, but like I need to perform on this team. So I need to focus on this. Like I, I don't know. I always like to look at like video with the national team and then with my club team and like see how I can like incorporate like my club play like mm -hmm. into the national team and how they can help each other. And I just feel like I'm like, I just have to focus on my club team because I want to like get in form I want to be feeling confident going into the world cup no I agree I think it's gonna actually be nice I mean we're not necessarily like at least my schedule we're not home a lot we go on the road a yeah, lot it's crazy same. especially with the challenge cup in there but it will be nice to just like like you said focus on one team um obviously in the back of your mind you're like I gotta remember all the national team stuff and be good for that but focusing on the team and the thing that's right in front of you and figuring out how you can help that team and if a team isn't doing well, like figuring out how you can be the difference maker on that team. And yeah. All the, all, all the things. things. All yeah. The I don't, I think everyone has pretty similar amount of games, but like 12 games without national team in the middle of it, like that's never happened. I mean, I've even played 12 crazy. games total in last season because <laughs> we were gone so much with the national team. So, okay. So obviously, like you said, world cup's coming up the last world cup. You did a great celebration. It's been talked about forever. You sip and tea. Do you got anything cooking up for this one? I need help. I need help from anyone and everyone. No. Like, I don't know what's going on. We're going to Australia, New Zealand. They like coffee, I guess, not tea. Um, <laughs> what else? They have kangaroos. What's going on? We need to like... Are you like hopping around? We need to come up with some new <laughs> stuff, okay? Pino always has the best celebrations and everyone else is just like, yay, you know? So, okay, I got it. You throw a boomerang. It hits everybody. We all fall down and then you catch it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, let's do it. Wow. I, I'm expecting to see that now, you guys. You're going to need to teach People me how be like, to what throw was a that? boomerang. I've never no, thrown one. I'm going to know exactly what it was. Everybody in the world is going to go, what was that? And I'm going to go, I have the explanation. Just come right to me. It was the boomerang. It was the boomerang. We talked about it on snacks. Um, Alex, most importantly, were you able to get Taylor Swift tickets? Wait. 
Don't answer that. We'll be right back with more Alex Morgan right after this break. Welcome back. We just asked Alex Morgan the most important question. Did you get Taylor Swift tickets? I'm still, uh, okay. So this is the- She's like, I didn't need to. <laughs> I can this go is the whenever. Thing, right? Like she's playing five days in LA in August, like beginning of August. Like meanwhile, uh, oh. hopefully I'm fighting for my life yeah. in Australia, New Zealand. So there is an opportunity after actually we play you, Lynn. Um, we then go to Louisville and then after that, She's playing like somewhere around, not in, obviously not in Louisville, but like somewhere, I don't know, I think it's like Detroit or somewhere else. And I'm like, can I pop up and go to the show? You gotta go. Right? You gotta this go. This was like the talk of the of the whole camp was like, which show are you guys going to? Because it's like, yeah. we're not going to the ones in our cities. We're just trying to find one like that's <laughs> convenient for when we're yeah. traveling. I don't know. What about you guys? I am going. My sister-in-law got me a ticket. I'm going in May. I'm really excited. I so have decided, I've done a lot of research about this. I am lover. That's my era. <laughs> Lynn doesn't know yet. Alex, do you know what era you are? I like a Taylor Swift era. Yeah, like yeah. you know how they're doing like, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like the outfits and the personality. I don't know. Like, like the... I always really liked Reputation because it was such like a curveball. So I... I love that. Yeah, I feel like it's a good one. (laughs) You scare me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, not after like 10 years. Come on. We're friends. Oh, no. No, you don't really scare me. But like reputation's a little bit like edgy. Wait, this is like kind of like a side conversation or a side question. But like, is there a story, Alex, that you remember of Sam where you like purposely scared her or she got scared or nervous around you or something? I think I've always been nice. Is Sammy and I've been like I I feel like I don't know yeah I've done the, we're buds yeah, we're, we're buds what what have I done to I'm make you scared nothing buds. is it my is it my <laughs> RBF no 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 I just respect you a lot Alex that's all oh well likewise two way street two way street here is there any Taylor Swift news that um you want to break on on this podcast. <laughs> I don't have any news. I'm I'm in the dark. Like I'm Midnight's era in the dark. Wow, that was really cool. Of you Speaking say. of Midnight's era, top three Taylor Swift songs. Um, I love Karma. It's a really good one. Love that. Um, and then chart. Oh my god, the song that's like, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Like Charlie thinks. Oh yeah, anti anti hero Charlie thinks it's me. I'm the potty. It's me. Like potty. Like bathroom. <laughs> and I just like don't have it in me to like tell her that's not the word. So if she comes with me to the Taylor Swift show, like to the concert, like she's going to be yelling, I'm the potty, it's me. But what about you guys? Oh, that like is... one song or two songs. Babe. All too well. 10 minute version. Really? Yeah, you love that. Naturally. You oh my... love that. Sam, <laughs> Sam loves a sing along. Um, like it's like her favorite thing in the world is to have I, like, a cry. I could like cry singing along with my in the, car. in the car I get like emotional because I just and, feel like I belong and she wants to play the 10 minute one and I'm like this song is going on forever yeah Lynn is like nobody knows these words <laughs> yeah literally and I'm like I do uh, <laughs> I like I like Taylor Swift but I just don't think I'm like so aggressive Swifty like I don't know like maybe I need to get involved more I feel that I feel like I don't know like I, I can't like name like 10 songs off the top of my head. Like, let's go yeah. rank one through 10. You know, who knows all the conspiracy theories and like all the like, like in like fan gossip who? Rose. Of course. Yeah. I can but, see like, that. She but knows, it's... she tells me stuff and I'm like, what? Yeah, but you can't ever trust what she says. Like, do you think she's telling the truth? Well, I think it's like, I don't know if the fans are telling the truth. Like, Hot I think take. it's conspiracy. Can't trust Rose. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes she'll be like, did you know blah, blah? And I'm like, I just don't know if you're just like trying to get, like, are you trying to make me look stupid? Oh, she does oh, do that. She yeah. does try to get yeah. you. Her and Sana try to get you all the time. I know. They got me the other day. They were like, oh, it was like the hardest field we had ever trained on in our life. And they were like, oh, yeah, they are you guys, you. are you guys wearing studs? Like, are you wearing soft ground? <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> duh. Like, why would you? And they're like, gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm so that stupid. Was my gosh. I was there for yeah. that. Um, yeah, Alex got got. Alex got got. It doesn't happen often. And we got her on snacks. 
Oh we got God. our own snacks. Alex, we're going to let you go. Thank you so much for coming on. You guys were awesome. And I love listening and watching you guys um, keep it up. And seriously, like, I was expecting to eat snacks on snacks, but it's okay. Oh, we got to send her some snacks. What kind, What's your favorite snacks mm. before you go? I, I mean, I don't know. Let's. How about what's Charlie's favorite snacks? Charlie likes okay. go-go squeeze, fruit snacks, cheese its She likes all the foods, all the snacks. Okay, random. another random question. Is there a baby food or kids food snack that like people are slept on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, there's these things. They're called yogurt bites or like yogis. And they're like four literally six-month-old babies, but they're delicious. Like if we get them at the store, like me and my 10-year-old niece are like just chowing on them and like there's no six-month-olds <laughs> around. And then the last thing is just one of these. <laughs> Give us a okay. chomp. Give us a chomp. Wow. Oh my oh, God, she did extra. <laughs> Thank you so much again to Alex. That was great. Um, next week on the podcast, week five, we have Christy Mewis. Thank goodness. Christy Mewis has made our merch and hopefully we can have an okay time, but round two of it and then we'll make more merch. Yeah. And Christy's so, going to be like, where's my cut? So anyways, don't forget to rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And one last thing, Sam, something oh. funny. Um, Jay, what's one last thing from you? The lemon jello LaCroix is absolute garbage. Jay. Spreading hatred and negativity. So unlike snacks. What positivity power trip are you on? God forbid <laughs> I friggin' spread a little love out here in this world. We need more love. You're right. Okay, speaking of love, don't forget to love and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcasts. Snacks is produced with love by Jay Wolf, Lauren Day, Patrick Cadino, and John Murray. For more great women's sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com and be sure to follow Just Women Sports on all your favorite channels. I'm Sam Mew. <laughs> and I'm Lynn Williams, and you've been listening to Snacks. <laughs>